Welcome everyone to Prague for what is the Prague surprise? Yes, our fixture list got changed up on us, so we are kicking off our European Cup group stage here today. But before we get on with that, we of course do have some games to catch up on, and I even have a little bit of transfer news. So without further ado, let's hop into Football Manager 21 and crack on with today's episode. Okay, so there was only one game to catch up on, and that was against Kayser Spore. And as you can see, it was a simple 2-0 victory. Nice goal there by Gekan slotting into the bottom right-hand side, and Karanza being the one with the assist. Now Malinkovic plays it back to the mailman, Sinan, then plays it across to Karanza, who finally gets himself on the score sheet and puts it past Lung. That was our two goals, and as you can see, a lot of their players had disappointing performances. The goalkeeper on a 6.5, was bad enough, but Amit on a 5.9 and Ali on a 5.8, yeah, that didn't do him any favour, especially with Baba, Baba, Bakayoko, Bakayoko, with a 6.1, who I think has been a rather decent player in recent seasons, so him being on 6.1 for them up front on his own, probably not so good. So, as you can see, we had a lot of green. Yes, that has become the theme. A lot of green has become the theme. Zubzuk with a 7.3. A back line of Blackett, Kublai, Gordinho and Lassen got 7, 7.77 7 and 6.7 7 respectively. As you can see, we went for the full starting lineup because they aren't really too tired. So, we're giving them a couple of games a week. When they start getting a bit more tired, we'll start playing the second team in these sort of games. But for now, we want them to keep fresh, keep them... Playing and just keep that sharpness up, you know. Shirok and Emrehan in central midfield, 7.5 and 6.8, okay. In the attacking mid, we had Eren with a 6.7, Mehmet on a 6.8, and Gekan with a 7.5, and Karanza with a 7.7. .7. And our substitutes, well, Moosin came on, he got 6.7 for Lassen. Lassen had a yellow card, I believe, yes, he got a yellow card, and he was getting a bit tired, so we thought we'd rest him up. We've decided to rest up Blackett. That meant the milkman come on. He also got a 7 and did a good job over on the left-hand side. Malinkovic came on, got a 6.7 for Eren. Eren was having an okay game, but it's nice to just rest up our wingers going into this upcoming game. And Volkan, I wanted to give him a bit of experience, so I get, brought him on. He got 6.8 for Emrehan, and Emrehan was kind of disappointing for a 6.8, to be honest. He was making some mistakes, which he shouldn't have been doing. So it was nice to bring Volkan on, give him the opportunity to play in this game. Now, the match statistics, we had five shots, they had one. Three on target to their one. 0.59 XG to 0.15 XG as a result. Seven corners to three. Nine fouls to their 27. One yellow card to three yellow cards. 93% passing to their 76. 67% possession to 33. Basically, we got the ball, we held onto it well. They went and fouled us way too much and their ill discipline went and bit them on the backside. Now, let's head on over, have a little look at that little bit of transfer news I have for you. I'm going to put in a break here, though, because I do need to find it, so I'll be there in just a second. Right, everyone, let me introduce you to Tiago. Yes, not the Tiago you're probably thinking of, but the 18-year-old committed attacking midfielder from Brazil. As you can see, we've signed him for 4000 per week. He's going to come in when his contract expires, and he's going to be a star player. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that minimum fee release clause moved at all. I couldn't increase it. I couldn't get it removed from the contract. So we're going to have to settle for 17.5 million. But quite frankly, if we get 17.5 million for this guy, then it's 17.5 million for free. We're getting him on a free transfer when his contract ends. We can't complain too much. I am going to try and give him a new contract about a season or so in if we're still playing a season or so in. But right now, 17.5 million is what he's set to be released for. And that, quite frankly, will be a bargain if someone manages to snap him from us, because as you'll see, he is amazing. So, five pros and four cons. He's 13 on aggression. He's going to play in this attacking mid role. That would mean we we'll move Mehmet back to where Shirok plays, so we don't have a problem in terms of foreign player role. Mehmet, we know, is a very good ball-winning midfielder. He could play anywhere within that midfield triangle. So it's okay. We can slot him in. He'll be our central attacking mid. I don't think we need to play him as a playmaker. And for that, he's pretty good. 
So he's got 16 first touch, 17 passing, off the ball 17, then 13 on technique, 12, 14, 15, 12, 12, 12, 12. Like, he's outstanding. His stats, which don't even go into this position, team work, 17, work rate, 16, balance, 17. This guy is amazing. In fact, he is possibly a captain candidate with 17 teamwork and 12 leadership. It's very nice to bring in a guy like this, especially for free. Now, as you'll see, our scouts have him as four star, potentially four and a half star, and four star potential, possibly five star potential. I think he's definitely, well, he definitely is four star, and this potential is 18 years old, so I would say he's guaranteed to be four and a half star potential, probably is five star potential, and probably is four and a half star current ability. But this guy is amazing. As you can see, he's got a few different cons. I'm not going to go through them. Feel free to have a little nosy if you wish on what he's good and bad at. But I think he's a bit of a steal, as is another youngster. I'm not going to show you him quite yet, but what I will say is Arsenal and Chelsea also want this other youngster on a free transfer at the end of his contract too. But they've not made him an offer for one. We have, however. So hopefully we can snap up that other youngster. I'll be able to unveil them to you if he does come but before we ramble on too much it is of course time to crack on with our tactical meeting yes not team meeting but tactical meeting we can finish joking around about me struggling to find it in this section we need to crack on with our tactical meeting and crack on with today's game so opposition instructions as per usual we're just going to tell him to do it we don't particularly care now as for all these we're going to ignore them this is a little disappointing, 19,794 tickets sold out of 20,232. What would have sold out for a European game? I mean, Slavia Prague, you need to drop your ticket prices or something because we ain't every day you get to see Bursa come to town. Anyways, this is our team. As you can see, the bench needs fixing because it's still set to our league bench. So Euro Cup. And this is what we are going for, the usual suspects. So Zubzuk in goal, back line of Blackett, Kubele, Gordinho and Lassen, midfield of Shrock and Emrehan with Eren, Mehmet and Gerkan in front and Karanza up front on his own. A bench of Atbek, Musin, Obilor, Mailman, Sinan, Anal and Mad. But without further ado, let's crack on with this. Um, balanced? Yeah, you know what? We're going to give it a go. Slavia Prague is the next worst team. They're the team we need to be trying to beat, so... We'll go balanced. When we play him at home, we're going to definitely go positive. But while we're away, we're going balanced. So, pass in space. Again, Carranza, I don't need to tell you this, but you're the lone striker. Focus on scoring. I know you've got an assist in the previous game. You even got a goal in the previous game. But passing is not your major point. Scoring is your major point. Anyways, I want you to pick up where you left last time out. That's some double-edged sword. It wasn't the greatest of performances, but we got the results, so I can't be too mad at them. Anyway, Philip Urban from the Czech Football Free Press. Ooh, we've got some foreign media here today. It's not the best weather for football out there today. How do you think the conditions will affect your performance? Well, it'll affect our performance about as much as the weather affected me up on that building earlier in the episode. So, not very much. Um... I believe that place is called the Dancing House, by the way, if you're interested in checking it out in Prague. But, um, positive, I don't think they're too bad. Our players can adapt to any situation. A little bit of weather isn't going to affect us. Exactly. Can Kubele take recent good form into this match? I hope so. We're, better, uh, we're a better team when he plays well. Well, obviously. We won't be a worse team if he played well, would we? And playing well increases the team, and thus we are a better team. But, as you can see, we are on some outstanding recent form. That probably means we're going to lose about 4 or 5 nil here today. But we are having a cracking time as this season has got on. But this group, it's definitely a difficult group to get out of. We've got Arsenal. We've got Lille, who's probably the second best. And now we have Slavia Prague. If we can get something here, it does put us in good stead to at least put in a decent performance and not finish bottom of the group with nothing. 
Lassen gets it over to Gerkan, now over to Lassen. Lassen, get it across to Gerkan. Oh no, it's intercepted. Luckily it bounces to Emrehan who whips one in, Mehmet's blocked and it's cleared away and Gordinho will luckily collect it over here on the right hand side. He's playing it back to Zubzuk now, he has Kublai in support, if he wants to play it to him, he does. Blackett, yes, over to Blackett, now got Eren. Will he make a run down the left hand side? Perhaps he has, he's made the overlap for Eren if he wants to find him. Unfortunately though, Eren goes over to the right hand side and finds Gerkan instead. He can pull it back to Lassen, instead he goes alone. The tipped shot goes to Carranza and Carranza has got his second goal in two games and his second goal of the season. Not bad for our new star striker. He's finally found the net and now he's found it in back-to-back -back games. Gerkan, bit greedy to go for this shot. Colour though, pushing it out to Carranza. Probably will not his brightest idea. And Carranza gets the easiest goal of probably his career. Anyway, Takax will play it back to Kara Fiat. And, well, they are holding on to the ball nicely. Kutschtag gets it over to Holes on this right-hand side. Will he find Holes in our defence though? We found a hole, he played it to Mehmet. Mehmet, and now it's Eren on this left-hand side. He's got Blackett in support, if he wants to play it down the wing to him. He plays it inside to Emrehan instead. Shirok now to Kublai. Kublai over to Gordinho. Lovely ball up to Emrehan. It's a nice tackle, but Emrehan will hold on to possession. Gerkan, can he get past his man, or will he be dispossessed here on the right-hand side? Whips one in. Eren has made a beautiful run in. Unlucky to hit the post, but even more lucky to hit the back of Collar. And it's a beautiful own goal from Collar. Let's have another look at this one, ladies and gents. Right, ball over to Gerkan, gets past his man. Decent marking, unfortunately for him though. Gerkan makes a beautiful effort to get it across to Eren. And then Collar just can't deal with the ball bouncing back off the post. 10 minutes, by the way. 11, now I've paused it, but only 10 minutes in. 2-0 up. Here, away. In the Czech Republic. Admittedly our easiest away game but it's nice to see an Arsenal beating Lille is good for us. We're not looking to finish top of this group. We are looking to finish behind Arsenal. Arsenal is probably winning this group and smashing all three of us in every single fixture. So what we want to do is limit our problems and just try and take that secondary slot. Hope Arsenal defeat these two in all four fixtures and just, I don't know, steal a draw against Arsenal, manage to beat both of these. Basically, don't lose to Slavia Prague and Lille, and we can squeeze out of this group. It's not impossible, but it is a difficult task. Lille is a strong side. This is the first hurdle, and it looks like we're managing the first hurdle. As you can see, 2-0 away. So the home tie should be a little easier. Anyway, Eren on this left-hand side. Will he pull it back to Blackett or go alone? He goes alone. It's gone all the way to Gerkan, who will poke it in the right-hand side. Come on, half an hour, and it's 3-0. Gerkan's got his fifth goal of the season. It's hard not to feel smug right now, but 3-0 away to Slavia Prague. Missed header from Kara Fiat was the major issue in that play and we capitalized and well looks like our half-time team talk is going to be quite an easy one takax plays it up to kublai nod it over to this right hand side gerkan will keep it in play now over to emreham back to godinho godinho will try a ball over the top on this right hand side lassen's made a run past their left back can he get a cross in though or perhaps pull it back for Aaron? um Aaron emreham I mean, he didn't pull it back for Emraham, but he did find Eren, who I accidentally mentioned, which is remarkable. Maybe I should have said Carranza. We might have had a fourth goal. Anyways, it's approaching half time. I think we can be pretty happy with this half time score. It's currently 3 0. We've had eight shots, they've had one. Four on target to their absolute zero. 1.3 XG to 0 0.31. Three corners to two, four fouls to three. Zero yellow cards, zero yellow cards. 91% passing to 82. 61% possession to 39. As you can see, Carranza got a goal. We then have an own goal, and then Demir getting the third one. So. Let's go tell lads how amazing they did. I'm very happy. Keep it going, lads. Oh, as you can see, Celtic having a good game against Mould over there with a 2-0 victory so far. Tottenham is 2-1 against Partizan. And, oh, Parrot having to get a 90-plus two-minute goal in that game, by the way. 
and we are up to the 93rd minute. I almost got distracted. Lille in this game though, currently 2-0 down. We should probably put the group up here, you know, instead of nosying at random games. Although, there isn't that many games. So perhaps we do leave this up. Although it's weird how the Arsenal game doesn't show on this list. Hmm. That's a peculiar one. Very peculiar that the Arsenal game's not on the list. But anyways, we want to make some substitutions. And we are going to focus primarily Kubelay is on a yellow card. So I will take Kubelay off. I don't want him getting sent off. So we have Aaron... Both our wingers, our striker and Shirok. Now, Mehmet, as you know, is going to be coming back into this position at some point. So it might be a good idea to play him there right now. Three substitutes remaining. Well, we're just going to make a double sub. I'm not going to do a triple because at some point that is going to bite me on the backside here in Europe. So I need to get back into remembering three substitutes. Only use two of them. Don't use four out of five because we don't have five. Sinan though will take the free kick over on this left hand side plays it up to Carranza Carranza near post Collar gets beaten and Slavia Prague are 4-0 down this is beautiful to see a brace from Carranza here today ladies and gents and what a beautiful goal this was it was just played up by Sinan Carranza given too much space and Collar beaten at the near post as you can see, Emery Han is a little bit tired, but we only have nine minutes, six minutes, four, four remaining in today's game. They need more than a goal a minute, and I don't think they're going to get that. So, wow. Lille pulled one back. Luckily, though, Arsenal, I think, won that one 4-1. Anyways, as you can see, we've got green across the board. Our best performer was Gerkand with an 8.1. Not far behind him, though, was Eren, also on an 8.1, and Carranza on a 7.9. Sinan with a 7.3 did a good job coming in that central attacking midfield role after Mehmet dropped back to central midfield and kept a 7 rating. Emery Han in that central midfield got a 6.9, and alongside him, Shirok got a 7. As for our back line, Blackett got a 7.4. Obilor with a 6.8 for Kublai who had a 7, Gadinho on a 7.7 .7, and Lassen with a 7.5. Our goalkeeper of course Zubzuk did a solid job with a 7.3. Now match statistics we had 14 shots they had 3, 7 on target they had 2, 2.04 xg to 0 0.39, 10 corners to 2, 9 fouls to 6, 2 yellow cards, 0 yellow cards, 90% passing which is a little low for us to their 77 and 64% possession to 36. That's a lot to forget through. But oh, well done, lads. That was a good win. There's not much more I can say, especially after I rambled on and said all that back to back. But oh, Enis Kilik from Sporks, who I believe has been following us all the way from Turkey. Such a positive result must have gone down well with you. Um, I mean, I might give him a day off, to be honest. They deserve a reward, and that's definitely a way of providing one. I'm not going to tell him that I'm going to do it, I'm just suggesting it might be a good idea. Anyways, to say that particular result was on the cards would be an exaggeration, would it? No, it was actually. <laughs> um, just how pleased are you by the outcome? It's an absolute superb win for everyone involved and I expect the supporters will save it for some time. A nice big away day putting us top of the group. Arsenal, yeah, they're probably going to take that when we play them back to back in the middle of the group, but we do get another 520 grand. This is great for our bank balance. That is not so great. Bruce ribs, one to three days. Luckily, it's not too long. And he should be bouncing back. I'm probably going to make him skip over the Siverspore game. I might bring him back for a downer, get a bit of match sharpness before we play Lille in the next episode. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we are going from Czech Republic in this one to, if the fixtures don't change, of course, France in the next one. So I hope to see you all when we head to France to play Lille in Lille. So without further ado, let's crack on with exiting this episode. I hope you all have a great night and goodbye.